Hello friends, <coughs> in this lecture I uh, will extend certain ideas uh, uh, that uh, were propounded by <coughs> the thinker Julia Kristeva and uh, she was critical of uh, the consideration of history as the central aspect of life and what she said was that women's time is different in the sense that it is not historical time. It is not time of past, present and future. It is not divided that way. Actually time is not important for women. For women what is important and uh, she, she gives lots of examples there uh, in, in her text. The, the women's time is that time which happens actually uh, at the level of surface, at the level of space, at the level of the actual earth where we live. So more earthy, more, more, more earthly, more earthbound, more solid uh, and not teleological. So I start this uh, particular uh, lecture, the second lecture with uh, an understanding of what teleology means to us. So uh, teleology means meaning. Teolo teleology means that the moment you utter a word, the moment you utter a particular expression uh, of language, then somebody will ask, will all, always ask you. Uh, I, I, I know that uh, when I use a word, when somebody, a friend uses a word to you and you have not heard the word, so the, your first uh, response to that word would be, what do you mean? What does this word mean? Which means that knowledge is supposed to mean something. So if, if, you, are, if you are becoming meaning centered, then that is called teleology. Uh, the, is there something else that, that can also be understood from words? If not the meaning, uh, I am raising a philosophical question and I think this is a very interesting question. There are writers who would say, don't ask for meaning, then what should we ask for? And then the answer is, well, there is more, more than meaning in life, there is more than meaning in speaking. That can be happiness, uh, that, that, that can be, you know, just, just uh, you have a feeling that, that, that you exist, you live, the, 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 and all those things. And uh, meaning is uh, not central to that. So uh, she is rejecting teleology, she is rejecting meaning as an important aspect of language uh, and uh, living in, in, in the world and she uh, doesn't want to talk about the purpose that you might have and the design that you might develop. So in a way she is critical of purpose and design and meaning in life and she says you live in order to live, in order to, uh, in order to talk. And uh, the talking may not be meaningful, but it definitely will bring people close to one another at the level not of meaning, but at the level of togetherness. I think that, that, that that's a great point that she's making, that the purpose of talking, the, the, the purpose of communicating is not to, to communicate a meaning, but to communicate a sense. And that sense can be much beyond what meaning is. Meaning is philosophical, but, 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 but you know, that, that thing is being. So being is important. And uh, if you, if you, if you uh, can go back to uh, discussions, then there are two words that are important in, in today's thinking about life, being and becoming. So you are and you become, and you become what you are not. So if you, if you go into this question, then a child generally is very close to being, and a young man is very co close to becoming because uh, the, the young man has stopped being, ceased being a, a child. So from the journey from childhood to maturity, that journey has actually taken away the childhood from you, the childhood from my own grasp. So the, the, these are the things that uh, uh, you know uh, people like Kristeva, uh, who think about uh, the world in a different manner, uh, will will you know tell us. <coughs> Indeed, the time has perhaps come to emphasize the multiplicity of female expressions. That time is not there in, in the 1950s, 1940s and uh, later, you know, people started understanding that uh, women say many things which we ignore and we ignore as irrelevant, we, we ignore as useless. But then, now there is a different kind of a time. Indeed, the time has come, says uh, Julia Kristeva, uh, perhaps come to emphasize the multiplicity of female expressions, many, the, the large number of female expressions. And you go, go to the expressions, uh, you, 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 you hear them talk, you hear them write, you use, read them write, uh, you, you, you uh, read their works, you read their novels and their poetry. And what is important is not that they mean something, what is also important is how they or what they express. And preoccupations, so that 
from the intersection of these differences there might arise more precisely less commercially and more truthfully she wants not to be commercial she wants to be truthful she 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 wants to be uh, precise she uh, more precisely less commercially so be more precise be more correct and be more truthful so in a way she tells us that uh, in in commercialism there, there is a, a generally a denial of uh, multiplicity only one thing is emphasized at a time but then so far as her understanding is concerned multiplicity is important less is not important more is important and 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 more means more truth more means more precision so this is a and she talks like a philosopher but then she has a very important point to make that the richness of life the, the value of 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 talking the, the value of touching upon different aspects the value of letting people know what you feel and uh, the, the many words that you use while while talking that is important so in a way uh, the, uh, when when people ask you to to remain focused then that is wrong because focus means that a large number of things have been pushed into the uh, pushed to the periphery so focus means are uh, talking only about that which somebody controls so why control when when, when i talk why should i uh, always you know try to uh, impose one aspect on you and not not another we should i should talk in such a general way so that you become aware of the actual world around you as a teacher uh, this is my job and when you become a teacher and if you are already a teacher then your job is to always express a kind of richness of language richness of expression richness of references so that more and more people uh, get into the process of learning and they start thinking on their own so this is what feminism does feminism does not allow men to control their thoughts what they say is we feel this we have 10 feelings we will express all those 10 feelings and sometimes one feeling will be expressed in so many different ways so that you know we will bring a kind of diversity and that 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 diversity is what she pleads for <clears throat> then you know uh, i i specifically come to the second lecture to to understand the aspects uh, uh, that, that that you know uh, she she uh, would be talking about and uh, these two aspects that 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 she refers to uh, and after uh, concluding the uh, discussion uh, with respect to history uh, i i come to the uh, second aspect of uh, the, the women's time and that is socialism and freudianism this this is the this is the second lecture and this is in the same uh, uh, essay which is called women's time and uh, naturally uh, when she is facing problems regarding uh, her own time her own present and she started writing in the 1960s and uh, she has said earlier uh, in in the essay you know that uh, these ideas that that that, that she is talking about these ideas actually emerged from the french uh, phenomena of the 1960s before that people thought about economic production economic relationships and i talked about that in 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 the previous lecture but then that was waiting for socialism or working for socialism and what she says now that after 1960 when a new kind of feminism emerges then our job is to understand the uh, you know um, events and uh, situations that occurred in society recently and uh, socialism was supposed to be the answer it was the answer for econo- economic inequality and uh, people who uh, were socialists they always emphasized economic production and relationships as something that will take care of economic inequality rightly yes she yes, she also agrees she also agrees uh, with most of the feminists of the 19th and 20th century who said that women should be equal to men but now her job is to tell us that uh, women should not only be equal to us uh, they, they should also be different from us because they are different and uh, you know uh, in in the in the previous lecture i talked about the difference that they always go to the space and reject or question the veracity of time so i i hope uh, that uh, that aspect can be taken further and uh, in, in this particular discussion we will we'll focus about socialism what is socialism done in the in the 20th century first socialist country was ussr uh, it became it, it it came into being in 1917 and uh, a kind of uh, inequality was abolished and social relationships were changed 
and government uh, go, uh, at that point of time started expressing the, the desires and the, and, and, and the needs of the, the working class and it became a different kind of society and women also enjoyed certain rights. That was socialism. Uh, but uh, her question is that uh, this socialism uh, completely uh, kept women uh, in, in the domain of knowledge, in, in, in the domain of, uh, you know, more and more progress. Uh, progress is fine, but, but there, there, there comes a point when you want to just enjoy the progress. And uh, in, I think the enjoyment is, is not a part of uh, socialism, at least at the moment. Uh, at the moment, what they think of is that you produce more, you, you, you make it a, a society of plenty, and you bring in equality, and uh, you bring into discussion. Discussion is fine. But then in the discussion, what is discussed is the economic relationships and the social relationships. So would you agree that discussion should always be around uh, social relationships and economic relationships or it should be about something else? In fact, uh, Julia Kristeva uh, is a votary for imaginative thinking, is, is a votary for poetry, is, is a votary for literature, is a votary for culture and, and, and culture and uh, literature uh, they can't be uh, used, uh, they can't be explained in terms of production and reproduction. They, they, they have to be uh, in terms of invention, in, in terms of happiness, in terms of feeling. And uh, literature doesn't move uh, in a line from one point to another. You can't find a movement in literature the way you can find a movement in economic production. I'm raising this question with respect to socialism in the 20th century, the way it has un unfolded itself in our time. And uh, Julia Kristeva, uh, who was born in 1941, started looking at this world critically in, in the 1960s and later. And uh, today, she would definitely say that socialism has entered the phase of a conundrum, a problem, uh, some, uh, an issue, you know, uh, which socialism cannot solve. Because uh, the basic purpose of socialism should have been happiness, should have been fulfillment. Has that come? Has that come in socialist societies? Maybe there are factors that control our socialism from the outside. That is true. But are socialists aware of this? Perhaps socialists are not aware of this and uh, therefore their job now is to take help from women, their perspective. That idea with which he starts with uh, prefiguring uh, uh, maternal uh, regulation uh, and, and uh, then you know, going back to regulation of, of the maternal thing, of the way uh, women live, the way women reproduce, the way women interpret, I think so, uh, socialism uh, has to become aware of this aspect of feminism. So in a way, socialism has controlled even feminism. Uh, the, we, in, the, this is a series, you know, the, the, where uh, most of us always talked about uh, socialism being at the center of feminism and women should be equal to men. That is of course fine. But then talking about uh, equality, and not, not talking about fulfillment, not talking about happiness, not talking about the space as much as, as one should, but talk always about future, about tomorrow. This is what she brings into question. And uh, she says that uh, socialism is, is important. Uh, it, it should give all kinds of facilities to women to, to, to sit together and discuss. Uh, they, they should uh, get you know, shelter and protection from socialism. They should get food to eat. And, and facilities to enjoy, all that is fine. But then, let women be also women. Let women also be recognized as women. And, and, and that will not occur uh, under the category of social relations. So, will, uh, do you agree with this uh, particular idea? That being is important, becoming is not important. You become better than before, that is not important. What is important is that you are a woman and you can enjoy as a woman. You are a man, you can enjoy as a man. And being a man, being a woman, in itself is uh, value laden, it, 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 it's value related and that particular aspect will bring into question the very context of socialism in our time. In fact, uh, if you start looking at socialism this way, uh, then you realize, and, and, and this is what you know I, I feel like going into, that socialism should think about the aspects of humanity, it, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, production, re reproduction, it's permanence, it, it's longer stay on the planet. All those things are, are important. So if, if we are talking about ecology today, if we are talking about nature today, if we want to save nature 
and uh, by saving nature, we'll be also saving uh, the humanity. All these questions are also there in the context of feminism. So she is a feminism, uh, she is a votary of feminism of the post-60 era when women became conscious about uh, the weaknesses and, and the limitations of socialism uh, because socialism was always talking about progress, always talking about dynamism, always talk, 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 talk about fi fighting against inequality, which was all right, which, which should be done. And there should be no compromise on that. But then socialism should also see, see you know, uh, things from within. So th that within part is missing in socialism. And that's why the last uh, phase of feminism that we are these days living with, and of which the, the, uh, Julia Kristeva uh, is a champion, this should be understood. So I have laid the ground for you, friends, for the questioning of uh, socialism, uh, positively, of course, and uh, going into Freudianism. What is Freudianism? Uh, in fact, uh, she, she, in this essay, uh, talks about the criticism that uh, uh, feminists always uh, made about Freudianism, thinking, you know, that uh, uh, men were uh, different than women, and men had something and women lacked it, and th that's how Freud you know, argued that there is something in, 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 in men that women do not have. Uh, men have the, 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 the kind of, uh, you know, uh, part of the body uh, which, 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 you know, uh, women are, are, are do not have. And, and, and uh, women all the time is, are obsessed by the idea that they are inferior because they don't have uh, a particular active part in the body of women. So, uh, Freud was talking about it, talking about the lack of it, talking about the lack of phallus, uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the female body, because of which, you know, uh, women started thinking differently. So this idea about the body, which, which I explained in the previous lecture, this idea actually is the crux of Freudianism, and uh, Freud, in fact, talked about it. But then, a uh, feminist said that uh, Freud was being unjust to women, because he, he, all, he defined, you know, women as lacking. And uh, whereas, you know, they, they, they were talking about not lacking, they were talking about being equal to, to men. So, uh, see, the, the, the idea is compounded and uh, uh, she wants to now get back to Freud and she wants to discuss Freud in a positive manner. That uh, women, yes, they lack something, but then lacking should also tell us about the worth of women in, in that particular state. And, and, and when, when you know about the worth, then you will realize that women perform a function not as equals, but as women. So, uh, the, the, let's, let's go into this a little further. Uh, the two aspects of socialism and, and, and Freudianism. I mean by socialism, she says, that egalitarian doctrine, which is increasingly broadly disseminated, disseminated means popularized, and accepted as based on common sense, as well as that social practice adopted by governments and political parties in democratic regimes, uh, I think she is taking us into the uh, area of the 1960s and 70s. She is not particularly talking about the USSR. She also is talking about the European countries, such as East Germany. She is talking about France, where there is a socialist movement and where there is democracy. So, socialists and democracy. So, in democratic regimes, Governments and political parties are talking about social practice. Social practice means as socially active people uh, living together in a state of mutuality and they are you know, conducting themselves with dignity. That is what socialism is. And then according to her, they are forced to extend the zone of egalitarianism to include the distribution of goods as well as access to culture. Goods is fine. But can you also uh, produce culture and say, okay, uh, now I'll, I'll, I'll make it available to you. If you bring, you know, the, the idea of distribution, the idea of production to culture, then problems will arise. And therefore, uh, one has to become aware of the limitations of the socialist thought. By Freudianism, uh, already you know uh, what, what socialist problem is. So, what is Freudianism according to her? She says, I mean that lever, she is calling it a lever, a, like a, calling it a kind of instrument uh, that, that, that will you know, uh, give you uh, power. Inside the egalitarian and socializing field, actually uh, for her, 
egalitarianism equality that is egalitarianism will be strengthened by fraternism there there will be a kind of a lever with with that lever you can in fact increase your speed and your power so lever inside its egalitarian and socializing field which once again poses the question of sexual difference and of the difference among subjects who themselves are not reducible one to the other so two points here and and i'll i'll go in, in, in into the detail of of the two points first the sexual difference should we should we say that uh, women are just uh, social citizens equal to men and therefore they should be treated equally with men this this is what you know uh, a controlling idea uh, might become that uh, don't recognize men as men women as women uh, recognize them as citizens and they are together and that there is no difference there this is what socialism ideally theoretically propounds and propagates and she questioned this idea she says that sexual difference should in fact be emphasized it should not be uh, you know uh, 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 steamrolled it, it should not be crushed the idea should remain that after all women are women and they should be living as women and uh, if, if they have interests in uh, you know enjoying in, in interest in uh, you know feeling uh, uh, something that is inside them if they want to express things in a manner that that, that they like then that should be allowed and rationality socialist rationality should not generally come in the way of their development because women may not like rationality to completely rule their activities so there is no question of being right and wrong rationality always tells us to be right and and uh, uh, right means uh, 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 correct and you should not be wrong and incorrect but then women can say that incorrect can also be as important as correct because after all uh, correctness and incorrectness are just just two different states of the same thing so the truth is larger than correctness truth is of course larger than incorrectness also but then remain together with that and if there is a difference then enjoy the difference so sexual difference uh, do not say that women are not women and that they are citizens you say that women are uh, uh, women citizens and men are men citizens there are similarities but there are also dissimilarities and the dissimilarities should be generally expressed in terms of allowing them to say things as they want rather than saying you are wrong here and and you are right here because the same thing uh, will you will create a kind of a rift between men and women in the wrong way so uh, let's strengthen socialism by allowing differences in cultures differences in communities differences in sexes so men and women uh, people from one area and another people from one language and another all these diversities they should in fact be protected and preserved i think it's a very fine point very nice point and this point has emerged uh, consciously only in the latter half of the 20th century and it is there that uh, we, we can pick it from, pick, pick it up from and adopt it uh, with 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 the <coughs> with, with a view to strengthening and enriching ourselves so sexual difference is one important thing she says of the difference among subjects this is the, uh, she extending the idea of difference from sexual to uh, you know to to uh, other kinds of differences like culture and not reducible one to the other now <clears throat> the other word first was difference so difference should be accepted and the second idea uh, that she says in the lecture is that human being should not be reduced to this or that thing in fact human being should be allowed to remain as they are don't reduce them reduce them means correct and incorrect right and wrong don't don't call them that do not make categories and do not fit human being into them so uh, for instance uh, in, in literature uh, it, it can be done very very easily uh, for understanding it and uh, generally this idea has has percolated uh, to uh, literature literary criticism that you express something and then somebody says okay what well, well, what does it mean and therefore use other words to say this is what it means but then the poet says if this is what it meant i should have written that but i had not written that so in in a way uh, criticism should should not allow should should not be allowed to reduce a particular social ex- a particular cultural expression to its meaning most of the critics do that but criticism should not do that in fact uh, this idea about feminism uh, will do a lot of good to even literary criticism because women are very close to literature 
in terms of emotions, in terms of ideas, in, in terms of uh, feelings, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, 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 sexuality, uh, in, in terms of happiness, all, all these things, they are more literary than they are economic. They are more literary than they are relational or, 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 or concerned with uh, relationships. Therefore, the word reducible is something that we have to think about. What do you say? That uh, there is a particular uh, Keats, a, a poem of Keats, for instance, uh, talking about beauty. Should they, can that be uh, reduced to an idea? And you say this is what Keats says, and then you write a paragraph saying this. Uh, you, you, you can always, you know, say the same thing in, in a different manner. Can that be done? In, in, in the sense, you know, that uh, uh, a woman has made a statement, and then the statement appealed to you, and therefore you say, okay, this is what she meant. If she meant that, she should have said it. But because she did not say it, so I reduced that particular statement of hers, that particular expression of her, to mean something which may or may not be the same. So, uh, in a way, she, she is fighting against what can be called reducing something to, uh, to which, which is already important for us and, and we should enjoy it and uh, we should not we just try to explain it away and say this is what it is. In addition to difference, therefore, important term under the point is not reducible. So, I have explained this. There should be difference and uh, you, you sh we should allow difference to remain. And the second thing is, we should also allow, uh, you know, the thing to remain in the same state in which the person expressed. Now, th that state of the words, though those words should be respected, those words should be understood in their context and then th those, those words should be retained in order to uh, understand better. So, uh, it is coming to that. Then further, a certain saturation of socialist ideology, a certain exhaustion of its potential as a program for a new social contract, this should be shunned, this should not be allowed because uh, socialist ideology actually has become repetitive in nature. It, it always talks about the meaning, purpose, aim, this and that. And uh, which is, uh, uh, so far as time is concerned, is, is quite important. But then, if you are going into the, the, the truthfulness of literature, truthfulness of ideas, truthfulness of human existence, truthfulness of uh, friendship and togetherness, etc., then do not reduce it to meaning alone. So, so, so socialism has not learnt much from psychoanalysis, has not learnt from the, the understanding of human mind has not uh, learned enough about uh, the, the, the human imagination and therefore socialism lacks this and uh, what she says is that this is called a kind of saturation of socialist ideology, a certain exhaustion of its potential as a program for a new social contract. So, a new social contract would have been there, it did not come. After USSR you had other countries, but no, no country has uh, been able to show through socialism an idea that will appeal to things, uh, appeal to people as much as the earlier things did earlier. The neurotic discourse in man and woman can only be understood in terms of its own logic when its fundamental causes are admitted as the fantasies of the primal scene and castration even as if, as may be, as may be the case, nothing renders them present in reality itself. So, the word that, that, that is used is that neurotic discourse actually is to be understood with its own logic. And then there should be fantasies. We generally do not talk about fantasies. We only talk about uh, uh, concrete ideas. So, the uh, concrete ideas should be also replaced by certain fantasies which are not clear, but then lack of clarity does not mean that they are untruthful. So, these are the ideas that, that, that she says. And finally, we come to the conclusion to say that Kristeva is deeply philosophical, perceptive. She is raising questions, she is not giving answers. And she is thought provoking, she is um, compelling us to think. So, these are the points that uh, th this particular feminist uh, who emerged in the 1960s and, and is still very relevant and very bold in her assertions, uh, we have a lot to learn from her. And uh, the best thing that she has given us is, uh, given us is that to go into the areas of the mind, which is also a part of uh, feminism in today's context. I hope uh, that this new idea would be acceptable to you, at least start thinking about it and uh, play around with this idea, uh, toy with this idea, entertain it in your mind and then you should reach your own conclusions.
थैंक यू